So wonderful to see you. How's it going? It's going very well. It's going very well. Excellent. Yeah. Well, greetings from Toronto. We're talking to you from Toronto today. And I got to tell you, I could not stop laughing from episode one to episode six. This is oh, good. hysterical. And I, I have to ask, I mean, first of all, what was life like growing up in the Gleason household? It, nothing like a show, just to be absolutely clear. Absolutely <laughs> clear on that. But um, no, I have, I have three brothers and, you know, we're all, we're all close in age and, you know, it, it's um, when you have that, there's a, there's a lot of male energy that's very chaotic and kind of um, wild, a little bit wild. Um, and I think there was something about, about that maybe that reminds me of Frank and Doofus and, and just uh, the kind of more physical slapsticky stuff. Um, so I, I see certain parallels in that respect, but, um, you know, I do think Frank and Doofus are kind of like kids themselves. Uh, yeah. You know, we always talk about Frank being like 13 and Doofus being nine. You know, he's just a little bit more naive than Frank, but uh, still, uh, yeah, hopelessly in arrest development. So, you know, <laughs> that's the kind of relationship they have anyway. Yeah. And I have to ask you, I mean, I don't think there was one episode where I didn't go, oh, my God, like every single episode, the crazy stuff that goes on. And I'm going, if I had a son like Frank, I don't know what I would do. What would your mom say about this guy? She'd say it's it's a filthy show, <laughs> but you know, uh, well done, lads. That was basically <laughs> her quote. Um, but I think you know, like Mary in the show, the character Mary is is yeah. she has her own issues, you know, and, and oh, I yeah. think it was important that it wasn't it wasn't the world being sensible and trying to get Frank to grow up if only he'd listen. It's like no, no, no. There are no uh, there aren't many belief systems operating in this world. It's kind of it's kind of a bit of a dog eat dog situation. So I think Mary isn't very discerning about Frank, and she's not really paying attention in the, in the ways maybe she should. So I, I I think the fact that they're also terrible people in some ways kind of makes humanizes Frank a bit more. I think. Yeah, they're all they're all nuts like all of them and i think that's what yeah. i love so much about it because we still yeah. are still kind of rooting for them they're endearing people yeah. but i gotta say i mean it, it was really a lot of fun to watch you and your brother work together and i was telling donald that that um you guys had me at doofus yeah. <laughs> like, if there's a character named doofus how can you not watch where does that come yeah. from that, that that comes from you know like a bad idea which then stays around but then actually we kind of go oh no it's the right idea you know like we just had i think once we, we, we came up with the idea of frank having a friend you know there was a voice we used to do where it'd be some guy saying you know my name's doofus uh doofus is my name <laughs> and that was it and obviously the voice isn't there anymore but you know i the name was just kind of there and then we thought about changing it and then we just we couldn't find another name that made sense. So you kind of circle back and just go, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. much fun. Yeah, it really, really, I love it. Just it makes me smile just thinking about each episode. Yeah. And there's a lot of physical ca co uh, comedy in this too. You know, I hope you didn't get, get hurt too much. Um, there was a lot of, yeah, we seem to be taking our clothes off and off a lot. I don't know yeah. what I think about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, I got hurt a little bit in the cage, the octagon cage, but that's my own fault. Um, Liz Fitzgibbon, who plays Nicola, is, is a very uh, proficient uh, kickboxer. Yes. So, uh, I, 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 you know, before we roll, I tell her, listen, just go, don't go easy on me. You know what I mean? We, it, it needs to look real or whatever. Uh, but I rue the day I ever said that. Uh, she certainly didn't take any prisoners. Um, so we were a bit beaten up that, that day. But uh, yeah, the physical comedy was something that we'd always watched growing up. And we were even talking earlier about stuff that we hadn't realized we were inspired by, you know, like Naked Gun and just that Leslie Nielsen kind of and seriousness, you know, with all the ridiculous things happening around him. I think that definitely... Uh, is inspirational in some way, you know. Yeah. Was, was there any particular, I mean, there, like I was saying, there's so many funny things, but was there anything in particular that you just, a scene that you shot, like perhaps the hot tub, like where, where you just could not stop laughing, or honestly, or just not hard to get through them? Yeah, well, we, we were pretty good with the car scene. We, we knew that um, we had to make the days. We had to make the days. We didn't have, a, you know, a budget that was never ending. So we had to make the days. So we were pretty well behaved. But there were a couple of times, 
like on the bus when Dubas is trying to explain to Frank what a metaphor is and Frank doesn't understand, we found that hard to get through because uh, it, it was the end of the day, we were quite tired and we were very close to each other. So it just, it was just, anytime we looked at each other, we'd, we'd set each other off. Uh, but it was rare enough now. We had to be on our, on our best behavior. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And, and you pay homage to a lot of films. You guys, you must be a huge film fan, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's almost unavoidable. It's kind of the main, the dominant, or well, you know, the, well, the dominant art form for me anyway, growing up and just, you know, remembering a lot of nights in, watching movies, you know, uh, it just seeps into you in a way. So between myself and Donald and Michael and the fact that we know each other for so long, you know, our references tended to be movies rather than anything else. Mm-hmm. So there's that. There's also how Frank thinks about movies um, and how he thinks his life is a movie. So, you know, at one point there was only a couple of episodes that had uh, movie references, but the, kind of, the more we went on, the more we realized that it would be nice just to have each one yeah have a kind of a team running through it uh yeah yeah now it was fantastic to see your dad in in this um in the last episode my goodness i had did now did you make him audition oh we did there was an extensive extensive <laughs> audition process uh down to the wire down to the wire but uh he took us all out for dinner so that's how we got the part no <laughs> <laughs> there was you know very early on in the in the writing there was you know an idea for like an older version of frank that he maybe he yes. meets and uh, but we kind of thought, where do we put that in? It didn't really make sense in any of the other episodes. Uh, but once we got to writing six, we realized that the kind of themes of six, the ideas of six, how it applies to the rest of the season uh, are now making sense. And the idea of an older version of Frank seemed to slot into that uh, really nicely. So it just worked out really well. But obviously we weren't you know, certain that he'd say yes <laughs> as well. So we were delighted when... Uh, he said yes, and he rocked up on set. He had a suitcase full of, you know, clothes that he ideas for costumes, and he was full of energy and ideas. So yeah. it, it it was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was really enjoyable. Did he teach you to drive in real life? He took me out a couple of times. Yeah, he took me out a couple of times. Um, <laughs> and uh, God, it took me a long time to get good at driving. So, you know, a couple of times, and then it was swiftly on to the driving instructor after that. You know, we passed on the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta say, um, there's nowhere else in the world that I can't wait to get on a plane and go to is Ireland. My son is actually studying in Dublin right now at UCD in his third year. Oh, wow. Yeah, veterinary medicine. So we went out and I just fell in love with the country and of course plans went to shit yeah. when this all happened and I couldn't go back. However, I want to bring it around because I it must have just been so wonderful for you guys to be able to shoot in Dublin and, and Northern Ireland, Belfast as well, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell me yeah. just quickly about being able to shoot in your home country. It, it's brilliant. And, uh, you know, um, like I was saying about, you know, myself and Donald Michael and knowing each other for years, you know, we grew up in the same hometown. Um, uh, I, you know, I've been living in London the last few years, so I certainly missed, you know, aspects of, of being home. So there was that, there was a nostalgia, there was the Frank, the, the fact that Frank himself was kind of not really grown up. So that whole thing about childhood and about those memories kind of just made sense uh, to set it in that location. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not every show you shoot gets to shoot in the location it, it purports to be. So we were lucky that all the exterior shots and all the important shots, you know, where, you know, it's North County Dublin or whatever we shot there. Um, and they kind of shot the interiors in Belfast. So we were just very lucky uh, that it worked out that way. Yeah. Well, it's such a great show. I really want to thank you for the laughs. I really needed it. And I think we all need it. So uh, oh, best good. of luck. I want to see more of Frank and Doofus and, and I want to see more crazy named friends too, to bring it <laughs> For the next series, okay? <laughs> I'll get thinking. I'll get thinking. Well, thank Take you for care. watching. I appreciate it. Cheers. Oh, my Bye. pleasure. Thanks for your time today. Bye-bye. Bye.